what I want to talk about today is what I call the full agenda. Uh, Walter Williams has brought this concept to light, and uh, it really has to do with the fact that nobody reveals their full agenda uh, right off the bat or on their first policy maneuver. Uh, people hope to get you to uh, relinquish in one point, and once that's well established, they go on further uh, than people originally thought they ever would have uh, in order to establish their full agenda. They knowing full well their full agenda all along, uh, yet they reveal it piece by piece so as not to uh, shock the general public into rejecting the agenda overall. And so this is particularly uh, common in socialism, and I'll tell you exactly um, what I mean. For example, when public schools were first implemented, uh, you read the literature, and I recommend strongly a, uh, that everybody read this book called uh, Education uh, Free and Compulsory. It's a 50-page book by Marty Rothbard, uh, so you have no excuses not to read it. Uh, but when that was first implemented, uh, if you read the writings of a lot of the uh, Forrest Mann and a lot of the original proponents of public education, you'll see that they were uh, purely statists. And they even uh, wrote things like uh, the child should be taught uh, that his teacher is superior to his parent. They wanted uh, kids to be taken over by uh, the state in infancy. And, but of course they didn't come out and say this to the general public, they wrote this amongst themselves. But see, they, they first of all uh, created, you know, uh, mandatory public schooling for children ages 7 to 14. Oh, the, we need an educated populace. We want to teach children to be good citizens. Okay, what they meant was we want to teach children to be good little uh, bureaucrats and communists. But they didn't say that because that would have never flown over in America. So they got the general public to go for 7 to 14. Then it went down to 6. And 6 was considered the first grade. Think about it. When you're 6 years old, you go into the first grade. But yet, kindergarten is considered a, a acceptable, a well-established part of a child's schooling. Why is kindergarten not called the first grade? Because for a long time, first grade was the time when you went to school. That's why it's called first grade. That was when it was necessary to take a child to school. But now when my child's five years old, if he's not in kindergarten, and a truant officer comes up and uh, wants to know why my child hasn't been going to school, I have two options. I can say, well, I'm homeschooling him. Or I can say, well, I just don't want him to be in school yet. I think six years old is the time that he should be uh, going to school. Um, but if I say the second option, uh, I'll be cited. And if I refuse to comply, I'll eventually be taken to jail uh, for encouraging truancy. And so now, five of the kindergarten is considered the established age at which a child should go to school, which originally it was six. You see what I'm saying? And now my wife and mother-in-law think I'm crazy because I didn't want to send my child to pre-K, which is now almost becoming universal at four years old. Okay? And that's almost becoming universal. And I had to fight left and right not to send my child to school at four years old. And it's getting, in the Oklahoma papers, they're uh, writing about offering free uh, pre-K for children as young as three years old. And of course, once that's accepted by the legislature, and it's already in many other states, not just Oklahoma, once that's accepted, of course, then it will become uh, mandatory or pre-K will become mandatory at four years old, you know. And uh, then that three, and on and on we go. Not only do they have a length in the time and age, but um, the type of education they want to give. Now, wants to concentrate on the whole child, on the whole person, on social activities. When this had always been considered the role of the parent. And uh, school or education as we know it, only dealt in formal uh, training, in, you know, the uh, 
in the subjects, like math and reading and things like this. So you see how the government encroaches. The socialists don't reveal right off the bat that they want you to turn your children over to them in infancy and let them raise them all the way uh, through adulthood or through young adulthood. But that's the full agenda, and you can find it if you read writings uh, between them. But yet they put it forth as, you know, one item at a time, so you'll accept it. You know, and I can go through some more examples right quickly. The FDA, when the FDA was instituted, uh, the only job of the FDA was to determine by testing, uh, was a drug safe or not? Now we've progressed, and the FDA's job is, is it safe? Is it cost effective? Is, are there other uh, similar products on the market? Has this need already been met by uh, products that are already out there, you know? Um, is this a, a, a method of treatment that we want to pursue? Things like this. And of course, now you get less and less drugs uh, because the requirements are so much more constrictive. And of course, the object at the very outset was to restrict and to uh, meddle in every single uh, element of, of the uh, drug market uh, possible, but they don't tell you that. They holler safety, 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 and you give in on safety and you give them this power to set up this commission, and the commission takes it further and further and further, step by step, once you've kind of relinquished on the original point. Smoking is a perfect example. First, only on the airlines. Oh, you can't have other people, you know, imposing this smoke onto others. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Uh, then it went to restaurants. Then it went to bars. You know, then it went to public buildings. Now, then to sidewalks and public areas. Now you have uh, laws in California where people cannot smoke in their own rent homes, in their own homes, in their own apartments. Okay, the goal was to control your life to the nth degree from the onset. But they would never say that outright. They start with, oh, the airplanes, you're in such close proximity. And somebody goes, oh, yeah, I, I, I can see that. Then restaurants, oh, you're right there next to each other. You can't enjoy your meal. Oh, yeah, I, get, I, I, I can see that. And that is the tendency, and the full agenda is never revealed. So. When you see one small part of, of, of a proposal, you need to take it to its logical conclusion. And I have to check my time. You need to be wary of the logical conclusion of the proposal that they're proposing because they won't tell it to you. You have to find it for yourself. Regulating gas prices. The full object of the state is to regulate every, every price, every price. They don't just want to regulate gasoline prices. They want to regulate milk prices, bread prices, health care prices, you know, uh, market prices for uh, drugs, for this TV, for this video court recorder. They want everything to be at a fair price. But they'll take the one issue that they have enough backing on, which is the gasoline prices. They want to uh, regulate housing prices. They'll take the gasoline prices that everybody will get behind because they seem to be very high right now, and they'll get you to give in and say control gas prices. Then there will be a housing market crisis and you won't be able to sell your house for less than a you know $200,000 if you want to get another house. You'll put your house on the market for $200,000 and they'll say, no, we have to control housing prices. And you'll say, but wait, I have special conditions. This housing market uh, is, is totally crowded. I can't buy another house for less than $200,000. And they'll say, we don't want to hear it. We have control to control prices. You gave us control over gas prices and you'll say, but it was just gas prices. And they'll say, no. You gave us the authority to control a price and we have the authority to control a price and we're going to step in and we're going to uh, remedy this situation on the housing market. Or well, whatever product it may be that you come out with, you have to realize the full agenda of what people are wanting to do and therefore you can't relinquish on one point because when the initial opposition is overcome, it will quickly go to the full agenda.